Friends, this video is my teardown and cleaning of my new Beretta 1301 tactical 12 gauge auto loading shotgun. And as you can see in this footage from the range, she is one bad witch. Right out of the box, this lightweight girl ate up every shell I put in her. And that includes 125 shells of two and three quarter inch buckshot and another 20 shells of three inch slugs. And she can hold seven in the tube and one in the chamber. And she can spit them out of her 18 and a half inch barrel as fast as you can pull the trigger. And that's pretty much as fast as humanly possible. Now I tell you, I am very happy with this purchase. This is one sweet shotgun. And you can find my initial review of this shotgun on my playlist. You just go to my channel, go to playlist, and look for gun reviews, and you'll find it. But right now, this girl's a bit dirty from all those shells. So it's time to tear her down check her out and clean her up but before we get started please take a moment to subscribe to my channel like the video and share the content to one of your friends thank you all right let's get ready to clean this bad boy we got to get this uh, barrel clamp off of it it's got one screw going one way one screw going the other way so we're going to have to flip it back and forth and loosen them until we get it wide enough that we can slide it off the end of the barrel. See, I didn't get it quite wide enough there. I gotta loosen it up a little bit more. Try not to take it completely apart. Don't wanna lose the screws or the nuts. Let's get it wide enough we can slide it off. And that's it, it's just a polymer piece. But set that aside. The end cap off of the magazine tube. Right. And we've got a plastic cap inside here. It's got a little tab that we're going to press in to get it out of there. Carefully pull the spring. There's that cap with that little tab really was kind of a pain in the butt to get out. We'll set it over here with the rest of the stuff. And put the spring so it doesn't get hurt. Alright, now we got to pull the follower out. Nice stainless steel follower. And pull that fore end off. Just kind of slides on off there. Lightweight. Alrighty. Now we just pull that barrel right on off there. Look at all that chrome, huh? Dirty. Dirty chrome. Shotguns sure do create a lot of dirt. That's why we got to Get the cleaning rod out. Yeah, I'm sure y'all gonna cringe at the way I do this, but I've been doing it this way a long time. Just like to use my wire brush, a little bit of hops on a patch. Get nice and wet, and then just wrap it around. A wire brush. That's just the way I've done it. Nobody taught me it. I just started doing it this way. Makes me happy, so I do it. Each their own, right? So, pass this through here four, five, six times until I'm happy with the hops. And then I'll put some Pro Shot gun oil or my G96 gun oil, whatever I have handy, and make sure I wipe that in there after I use the hops. I always like to use the gun oil after the hops. I don't want to leave a, a strong 
cleaner in there. I want to leave it with a protector on there. So keep on going. I get it where I'm happy. all this up. I probably should have done this first, but hindsight's 2020, right? Anyway, I just want to get all that cleaned out in there. Sorry I didn't have the camera pointed. There's my G96 gun treatment. I like this because I can use it inside and it doesn't smell up the house. Spray a little bit on there, like I said. I'm gonna run a couple through there with the G96 on there, and I think it it keeps it from uh, you know fouling up as bad the next time. So here's the receiver, here's the recoil mechanism and the bolt and the charging handle. What you gotta do is push that bolt in about three quarter of an inch line up the keyway and pull that charging handle out. I'm sorry I didn't get good footage coming out, but I got some good footage putting it back in. So just stay tuned for a minute and I'll show you that. Pull this on off. And uh, there's your bolt. And kind of, it's a rotating assembly. Look how it is welded to the action arms so it doesn't come off there. But that rotates pretty beefy. It's all chrome. Nice quality. Uh, spray some gun oil up in there. Do the same thing with my brush. Just reach up in there and clean inside the receiver. Uh, that brush is just brass. And then because it's round, now I need to get the corner, so I will grab my little plastic brush, nylon brush, I mean, and get up in all those little corners and stuff that the wire brush didn't get. And just the best I can, but it's pretty clean in there, considering how many rounds I fired. That bolt looked pretty nasty. So the receiver wasn't too bad. I'm just going to wipe all this down. I never really care for the factory oil. You know, it's got that brownish tint to it. I don't know what it is. Some kind of light cosmoline or something. You know, I want to replace it with what I want to use. You know, it's probably better quality. So just clean everything and get a good coat of oil on there and that'll keep the fouling from sticking next time. I'm not going to take the trigger out. I'm not going to tear down the bolt. The bolt's got a very fine roll pin that holds in that firing pin and I just didn't want to deal with it. I didn't think it was dirty enough. But, uh, that roll pin's right there at the back end of it. See how small it is? Anyway. That's uh, this here. The housing's made of plastic. I'll just clean it up the best we can while it's still assembled. I think it'll be just fine. Eventually, I'll have to do that, but I don't think I'll have a video camera in my face when I do it because I don't want to lose that little roll pin. Who knows how long it would take to get a replacement? It's pretty neat the way this thing is engineered and designed. So Tynes did a good job. Alright. Just cleaning everything. Mm. 
Now when I get done cleaning this, I'm going to put a little lube on there. So I'm going to use my Zero Friction Needle Oiler by Pro Shot, and we're going to use that to lubricate up the bolt. And uh, just oil that up good. Wipe off the excess. And on the action arms, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, this here. It is the Geisley formulated, uh, real thin grease, purple. Uh, you know, Geisley Automatics. That's where that come from. Pretty good stuff. I've used it on a few different guns and it works real nice. I put it on my Glock, the, the steel slides inside the Glock. I use that there a lot. And my 1911s. So It'll work just fine on these action arms. Stay on there pretty good too. It's just a real thin synthetic grease. That's all it is. Right. Wipe everything off. Make sure we ain't got no lint from them cleaning swabs or anything on there. And we will slide this back in here. Make sure we get everything lined up. And here we go. All right. So. As promised, show you a little bit more about this keyway, how it goes in there after we get it wiped off. Let's turn around this way, it's easier to see. Alright, so I want to push that in there. See inside that hole? And when you push it in about three quarter of an inch, it lines up there. And you can see through it. And you just stick that charging handle right back in there. Barrel, one more wipe on it. Well, we have it apart. Let me slide this baby right on in there. tight. Just got to be a little persuasion with it. Just a tight fit. Well, we got it. Get stuff out of the way. Alrighty, let's clean this spring up now. You don't want to go yanking on it. Twist it. So what I like to do is just get a rag wet and just screw it through with very little pressure. That way we don't distort or stretch the spring. But we want to get it wiped down and make sure we got oil on it. Nothing worse than pulling a shotgun apart and find the spring all rusty. And it, it does happen. But this is how I prevent it. If you got a better way to do it, let me know. There's our follower. All right, get that cleaned up, all wiped out, and we stick that in, put our spring in there, and it's not a real heavy spring, um, surprisingly. All right, we get to play around with this. Darn cap, I really don't like the design. Now some people leave this out. They say you can get an extra round in there if you if you leave this cap out, but no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in there. Get it in there. Eight rounds is plenty for me. Alright. But it is a pain in the butt to get it started. Looks like it would have came up with a little better design than that. There we go. Alright. Okay. Clean this baby up. Now I noticed 
I got a little dirt in there, I don't know, just from having something on my hand or something. But it gets in that checkering. And you can't just wipe it off because it's down in the checkering. So that's the best way to do it. Spray it with some gun cleaner and take your nylon brush and scrub it. And it lifts it all out of there. I might as well go ahead and get all that residue in there because that's where it vents. It vents inside there. So you want to get all that cleaned out good. And everything wiped down good. Slide it on there and uh oh. And push that right out. Take it back off. Now that's the little piece, that little ring that came out, that's a little piece that it has a pin in it. It creates the ratchet action for that magazine end tube uh, retention. So I had to struggle with it a little bit. And, um, I learned you just have to be really careful, make sure everything lines up. Took me about three times getting that fore end on, keep knocking that that out of there before I finally got it on there. And now we can put our magazine extension or magazine end tube cover. Screw it on there. Get it good and tight. Check our action. Check function, check the firearm. Trigger everything. Everything's working just fine. Feels good. And then we'll go ahead and put the barrel clamp on there and give it a final wipe down. This movie got awfully long, didn't it? Um, if you're still with me, thanks for watching the video. I really like this gun. Can't say enough good things about it. Hope to do some more videos, more outdoor range where I can approach targets and, and be a little bit more exciting in my video um, but at least at the indoor range you know I got a I ran over a hundred rounds through it and, and not a single problem and I had uh, slugs and three quarter or, or yeah two and three quarter buckshot High brass, 1300 something feet per second. So, but I tell you, you could really feel the difference in those slugs. It's not a hard kicker. I'd say my 870 kicks harder because that um, auto loading gas system does absorb some of it. But it's a light gun too, a six and a half. But let me tell you, it's nice. It really is. Get a chance to shoot one, shoot it. Get a chance to buy one, definitely buy one. Because this is uh, that's a that's a bad little bitch of a shotgun. Let me tell you. All right, friends. Don't forget about the knife giveaways. Check the playlist. See what month it is, and see what knife I'm giving away. I give away a new knife every month. And um, don't forget get to subscribe to the channel like the video share it with a friend that you think might like the same kind of content and other than that thanks for viewing